ZAC became the biggest art channel on YouTube in 2019 because of its insane customized products. But since then, Zaxby's have dropped tremendously and a lot of people aren't as interested anymore. And I think I might know why. So let me explain. But first, we're gonna have to go back to early 2019 when Zach first started customizing Apple products. He created this trend of drawing on Apple products and giving them away to people. Basically adding a Mr. Beast type feel to his videos and adapting it to his niche, which worked pretty well for him actually, even though OG viewers didn't like the new Zach. That didn't stop him from getting the bag. Zach continues to make more of these videos surprising bigger YouTubers and TikTokers with custom products. Also doing bigger giveaways, bigger challenges, and even bigger paintings just topping every previous video each time. His videos were just so perfect. Maybe even a little too perfect. The reason why I say this is because Zach would later get exposed for some very shady business. Pun intended. On June 12th, 2020, Zack would get accused of stealing an original character made by Geront Works from his video, I customized 100 iPhones, then gave it to people in need. ZAC stole my character and used it for his own benefit. The first photo is from his video that was posted today. The second photo is the character I created last month in a live stream. Art theft is disgusting. Zack would start getting a ton of hate for this, but not for long. Some people say it was his assistant who did it, but I didn't find any proof of that so i'm guessing people forgot about it but wait it gets worse fast forward a year later and zach gets exposed again jazza the father of the art community would dedicate a two-part series to exposing zac where he gives his honest opinion about zach and his experience with him but first watching every piece of content on his channel talking about allegations of dishonesty uncredited work unfair treatment of collaborators and workers and being a part of an alliance he used solely to benefit his own channel i released part one on october 22nd last year but the very next day i was contacted contacted by multiple art YouTubers Zach hadn't spoken to in years, telling me he was trying to talk to them and in some cases offering money for past mistakes or injustices. So in part two, Jazza interviews some of the artists that reached out to him, including Zach himself, so that they can talk about these allegations. The R Alliance he was part of also reached out to talk about their experience with him. We were all very grateful that he came with the ideas and with the schedule and the plans were really big. He initially volunteered and simply said, I'll go ahead and upload the videos. I asked him, shouldn't the Art Alliance be a separate channel? But he said, no, for now, I'll just keep it on my channel. That's when I thought, okay, well, then you will be the one benefiting from it. When he says benefit, she means he's getting the views, subscribers, watch time, and revenue from their work. That's all going on Zach's channel specifically. Basically having them work for free, which is probably why they suggested making a separate channel. But now saying that out loud, I sound mad stupid. Shut up! And as Zach grew, he just stopped contacting them about future projects and completely ghosted them and removed their channel links from his channel page. Wait, 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 don't click off, don't click off. Ignore that stupid video and you recommend it. I'm, I'm not done, I'm not done. Please, just, you, just stay, stay, please. There's also allegations of mistreating collaborators. Jazz interviewed Bobby Duke Arts and Azo Clay about some past collabs that never happened. So basically, Zach contacted multiple artists to do a huge collab in a short amount of time, which was unfortunately impossible. She said, like, I want to make the world's largest sculpture i've got 10 grand to fund the whole thing and we can make this in four days and claim he couldn't do the collab because of his budget but when asked to do a collab for ace of clay's channel and bobby duke's channel he declined but the artist zach ended up collabing with didn't even get proper credit zach contacted this ice sculptor to make his oc decks as an ice sculpture with 10,000 pounds of ice and the only credit he got was a screenshot of his instagram in the video there is no direct traffic source to his instagram no links no ads nothing where he got almost zero to no following at all from that video but we can just pass it off as water under the bridge right because it was paid work remember but still you'd expect him to give him some kind of direct traffic source in the description or something although this wasn't the only collab without proper credit Zach did a challenge with five other art youtubers where the last person to stop customizing a tesla would win a tesla and even though their ads and social medias were at the end of the video there was no direct access to their channels in the description which means viewers would have to go and look up their channel names and as i said in the video so you didn't uh, get many subscribers i didn't get 
literally any. And this is where the allegations of dishonesty come in. At the end of the challenge, Zach, Chloe, and Vex decided to split the value of the Tesla three ways. And after they turned off the camera, Zach said it would be the value of a base model Tesla. And off camera, he goes, okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I'll just do like the base model of a Tesla, which is $14,000. We knew that wasn't right, but none of us said anything. A 2019 base model Tesla was $35,000, not $14,000. And Zach goes on to explain that he saw a Tesla on eBay for that same price. It's, it, it was either like really broken down or like barely working, but but at the time I was like, okay, this is like the minimum I have to reach to like technically be the the value of a Tesla. Now, if a new viewer came across this video and watched it all the way through, they assumed that you split the value of the Tesla that was in the video, right? Imagine someone watches the video and then sees Jazz's video and they recommend it, clicks on it to find out that you are being dishonest. I mean. It's not a good look, Zach. And as his channel grew, he went from artist Mr. Beast to artist Rice Gum. Why do I say that? Zach would continue to flex the amount of money he had, surprise rich people with expensive things, and it seemed like he just wanted to associate himself with bigger influencers. Like, dude, how many iPhones does Charlie D'Amelio need? She literally buy 12 flat screen TVs. She could buy my house. She could buy me. Wait, that's sleep. This right here is my favorite thing. It was fine with the Mr. Beast collabs, but I'm pretty sure Jimmy gave away all the stuff that Zach gave him. The Tesla he gave Jimmy was given away in a Would You Rather video. The house he customized was given to Nolan. Now, I don't know about the iPhones, but I'm pretty sure. Ow! But I'm pretty sure he has more than one phone. He also surprised him with a customized boat, but I'm pretty sure they gave this away too. And I know, I know you're tired of hearing me say, oh, the allegations, the allegations. Ah! But there's also allegations of Zach overworking his employees and putting his employees through extreme and uncomfortable challenges just like the ones he used to do himself. He was like saying on Twitter the other day about how him and his team have been working all day and all night and they've not taken a break and I'm pretty sure that's also illegal. And Jazz believes that his craft channel heavily features bullying and one part that really bothers me is when he starts talking about Viv. The problem I start to see is when one person isn't pulling their weight it's really clear to see that group dynamic turn on them. Viv, you just lost a hundred bucks for everyone. So Zach calls out that she is losing money for other people. And another video where she failed the challenge, Zach had her run a mile. And after the video was posted, she posted an apology on her Instagram, explaining that she has asthma. I have asthma and another really severe breathing condition. And over the past few years, it's gotten worse. So I wasn't able to run as I would like. And I'm pretty sure she didn't join the team for her athletic abilities. Because as a result of that challenge, there was negativity aimed directly at someone who was put in a position outside of their control, beyond the capabilities they would volunteer for, or even related to their craft. Jazza even gave Zeki a chance to fix all the dishonest clickbait he did and actually give proper credit to his colleagues. He removed some price tags from a few of these. Teeny Weenie Challenge, he removed the insinuation to a world record. On the left are screenshots, the original descriptions on the right are the ones that he's updated since our interview. He's given some links to some of these people, but not all of the collabs have links. He's done something, but to a degree, I feel that honestly, Sometimes it's too little too late. And as time went on, Zach would start uploading less, and Zach's views on average went from 20 million to 6 million views per video. I mean, most likely because of his upload schedule, but you can clearly see that Jazz's video contributed to this. I mean, who'd watch him after finding out he's being dishonest, prioritized celebrities and bigger YouTubers, doesn't even give proper credit, and mistreats his colleagues and employees? Well, short answer, me. Why do I say that? In the interview, Zach said that he wants to be the best person he can be. And I believe the notion that people can change. I believe Zach will do better. Zach did say he regretted all the dishonest clickbait he did. And of course, it's not proper credit if you don't get a link in the description. I mean, I'll be grateful just being in the video, but that's just me. But that was the artistic downfall of ZAC. I hope you enjoyed. I'm so